Hi, Chad, Versamatic. Today we're going to show you how to install a wet end kit into our E2 non metallic pump. Out front, we have examples of our air end kit and our wet end kit for our E2 non metallic pump. The rebuild you're going to see is accurate in man, method, and machine, but for video purposes, some parts of the work performed have been condensed in time. At any point during the presentation, please pause this video until you have completed any part of the process. The pump we are using in this presentation has been built new and is considerably easier to work with than a pump that has been used in the process. Additional time may be required in the preparation and separation of parts and components during the rebuild. Identifying which kit is required for your repair has become easier on newer pumps with the permanently affixed metal serial number tag that now indicates the wet end and airing kit information for the pump. Kit information can also be found in the service and operating manual. Versamatic Genuine Replacement Parts Wet End and Airing Kits provide a bill of material of the components included in the kit. All items included in the kits are components that Versamatic recommends replacing when rebuilding a pump. The pump we are using today is an example of the ease of kit installation. Always consult your respective service and operating manual before performing any maintenance on your pump. Service and operating manuals include composite repair parts drawings, repair parts list, and torque specifications. For service and operating manuals or more information, visit us on the web at www.versomatic.com. Always remember that safety is the highest priority. When working on or around any equipment, always follow the correct safety procedures. Always read and follow the safety warnings and instructions in the service manual before any work is started on the pump. For more information, see the Warren Rupp video on safety at versamatic.com. Our wet end rebuild today will include diaphragms, check balls, and valve seat o-rings. These are the recommended tools used with the rebuild. While the sizes may change based on the model, the type will remain the same. Light grease, 12 inch pry bars, O ring pick, torque wrench, half inch drive ratchet, 3 8 drive ratchet, snap ring pliers, sockets and or wrenches, 3 8 inch, 1 half inch, 7 16 inch, 9 16 inch, inch and a quarter socket. 532nd inch socket head allen wrench. All right, let's get started. For ease of assembly and disassembly, today we're going to use a 3 inch drive impact gun. Let's we'll start off by removing the discharge manifold. Now remove the main air valve assembly. Set the main air valve assembly aside for later disassembly. Now remove the suction manifold. Once you have the suction manifold off, go ahead and set aside for the removal of the check balls. Now remove the valve seat O-rings and the valve seats. Remove the check balls and the valve seat O-rings. Now we're going to remove the discharge valve seat O-rings and valve seats. And check balls. Now we're ready to remove one outer chamber. Once you have the outer chamber removed, go ahead and set aside for later reassembly. Now remove one diaphragm assembly. You may get the diaphragm assembly or you may get diaphragm assembly to the rod. Remove the outer plate and save for later reassembly. Discard the old diaphragm. Remove the inner diaphragm plate for later reassembly. 
in the plastic washer. Now remove the opposite outer chamber. And set aside this outer chamber for later reassembly. Remove the diaphragm assembly that is attached to the rod. Now we're ready to disassemble our old diaphragm assembly. Today we will use a vise with soft jaws. Soft jaws are utilized to ensure that the shaft is not scarred, scratched, or damaged while the shaft is clamped in the vise. Versomatic shafts have wrench flats on the rod to assist in diaphragm removal and installation when performing maintenance in the field. Once you remove the old diaphragm assembly from the rod, go ahead and set aside our inner and outer diaphragm plates and discard the old diaphragm. Be sure to save the plastic bumper washer for later reassembly. Inspect the diaphragm rod for any scars, nicks, or scratches and replace as needed. Now we're ready to install our wet end kit. Install our plastic bumper washer. Inspect the inner and outer diaphragm plates. Ensure the plates have no sharp edges or scarring on the radius. Plates can be cleaned up with emery paper, crocus cloth, or fine sandpaper. Make sure the radius is maintained during cleanup. Replace if necessary. Be sure to install the radius of the inner diaphragm plate towards the diaphragm. Note on the diaphragm air side, we also list the material in the part number and a date code. Note the, the built-in o-ring on the center of the diaphragm that seals on the main shaft. Now install our outer diaphragm plate. Inspect the outer plate for any sharp edges. Inspect the radius. Torque the diaphragm assembly to the specified torque in the service manual. Apply a little grease to the main shaft so we don't damage the main shaft O-ring. Be sure to align all the bolt holes with the diaphragm in the inner chamber. Once the bolt holes are aligned, we're ready to install one outer chamber. Inspect the outer chamber radius where the diaphragm rolls across for any sharp edges. Lightly address those sharp edges with the emery cloth or crocus cloth. Inspect the ball guides, the machine surfaces on the suction side and a discharge side. You can lightly address those sharp edges of the ball guides if needed. Note the orientation of the outer chamber with the center of the pump. The discharge of the outer chamber should face towards the main air valve assembly. When tightening all the bolts, be sure to torque to a specification and tighten them in a star pattern. Now on the opposite side of installing our diaphragm assembly, be sure to install plastic bumper washer first. Now inspect the inner diaphragm plate just as we did on the first side. Inspect the radius for any sharp edges and address as needed or replace as needed. Be sure to install the radius of the inner diaphragm plate towards the diaphragm. Here we've inverted the diaphragm, so we have the air side of the diaphragm facing towards the inner diaphragm plate. When inspecting our outer diaphragm plate, inspect the radius for any sharp edges. Address those sharp edges as needed. Now we can shift the diaphragm across using a set of pry bars. Be sure to get up underneath the inner diaphragm plate so we don't damage the new diaphragm. Once the diaphragm assembly is shifted across, you can roll the diaphragm back to its natural shape of natural bulge out. And torque the diaphragm assembly to the specified torque. If you achieve torque between bolt holes, always go to the next hole. Inspect the machine surfaces of the outer chambers. Note the orientation of the outer chamber. 
the discharge side of the outer chamber should face towards the main air valve assembly. Install our outer chamber bolts. When tightening down the outer chamber, be sure to tighten the bolts in a cross pattern in torque to specification. Install our suction side check balls. Install our valve seat O-rings. Here we have two O-rings per valve seat. Inspect the valve seats for any damage, scarring or scratching and replace as needed. Note the chamfer on the valve seat will face towards the check ball. Repeat this process for the opposite valve seat on the suction side. Now install the other two valve seat O-rings that will seal our valve seats to our suction manifold. Inspect the suction manifold machine surfaces and the integrity of the casting and replace as needed. Orientation of the manifold is based on process requirements and may be reinstalled in either direction. Torque the suction manifold bolts to the recommended torque spec located in the service manual. Now install our main air valve gasket. Be sure to align all the bolt holes and pilot porting holes. Otherwise the pump won't shift if it's installed incorrectly. Then torque the main air valve assembly to the center block to the specified torque. Inspect our discharge manifold, ball guides, and valve seat area for any damage or sharp edges and address those sharp edges or damage with a light sandpaper or replace as needed. Be sure to fully seat all valve seat O-rings. Now install our check balls. Inspect the valve seats for any damage or wear and replace as needed. Note the chamfer will face towards the check ball. Lastly, install valve seat O-ring that will seal up against the outer chamber. The orientation of the discharge manifold depends on the user's application. When retightening the discharge manifold, be sure to torque to factory specification in an across pattern. That completes our wet side rebuild. When doing a complete rebuild, see our air side video or for additional information, find us on the web at versamatic.com or contact after sales support at service.versamatic at idexcorp.com. Thank you.